Here's how to make a I voted sticker in Blender. We're gonna make something that looks like this. First pull up reference like always. So what is an I voted sticker? At least in the US, looks like this. Here are some options. So this is kind of what we're gonna be wanting to pull in. So I pulled this as a JPEG and we're gonna use this as a UV mapping. Cool, so how are we gonna do this? We first gotta model the sticker. And so we're gonna do this by pulling in a mesh plane and we're gonna rotate this on the Y axis by 90. Cool. And the default cube can go away. There's the mesh plane, perfect. And then we're gonna add a reference picture. So if you go shift A and we can go to image reference and then we're going to model around the shape of the sticker. Control two to add a subdivision surface modifier and we can move this around and then keep it in the X axis so it's perfectly aligned. Then it's really quite simple. We're just gonna add a loop cut with control R Make it center, perfect. And then we're going to scale all of this. So S to scale and on the Z axis. So everything else is, whoops, S, Z. There we go. So everything is centered and it moves at the same time. Great. A to grab everything, G to move it up. Pull in this side. Uh, and I guess we can fully cut up actually half of this. So we can X to dissolve vertices. And then we're gonna go into modifiers and we're gonna add a mirror modifier to make it really easy. Generate mirror. I think it's on, I'm gonna pull up one here, right? Hello? Nice. And we should do against the Y axis. So you're gonna, what the heck? Oh shoot, I messed it up. So we gotta grab the edge and set the origin. So we're gonna grab the two to grab the edge, shift S. Whoops, shift S, cursor to selected. Tab out, we're gonna go right click, origin, set origin to 3D cursor, boom. There we go. We had to fix the origin of the object so the mirror would work, so my bad on that. But now it's working as we would expect. And then we go back into edit mode with tab, push one to see all the vertices again. And then we can just pull these puppies in. G, 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 grab it in. Uh, uh, uh. Grab. We could add more geometry if you think we need to, and maybe we do. And also these are no longer centered. So if we do uh, scale, I think on um, Y zero, it'll line them up. So we have the first sticker done. We're gonna do F2, sticker one. And then we're gonna go into the shading mode now. So we have this, but also we need to apply the mirror modifier. But before we do that, let's just shift D it out. And we can say sticker two. We can do that really quick too right now. Let's do this, grab, edit mode. But I think that's okay. Good enough. Cool, sticker two, sticker one, nice. So now we have this done essentially, Alt Z. We see it covered up, cool. And then we're gonna go into the shading tab. So we go here, shading. Uh, we're gonna do use this image texture we have. So we have this as in the material. And so we're gonna call this uh, st sticker one, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to do control T. Open up the image texture, which is I voted. Grab X, pull it up. Nice. Now it needs to be UV unwrapped. So we're gonna go grab all the points. Oh, I need to apply it, whoops. So we grab this, we're gonna go into the modifiers, apply. And then we're gonna go to the, at least the mirror, so now the geometry's on both sides. And we're gonna go here, cloud grab everything, A to grab everything, U, unwrap. Now we're gonna go to the UV editing. Period to bring up the focus, grab everything. And then we're gonna scale it in a little bit. We're gonna grab it over here, R to, whoops, R to rotate it, not R twice. Looks like we need to rotate it. Oops, rotate it back. Do we? Looks like it's inverted. We could be on the wrong face. Uh, uh, that makes sense. So we can just grab this, uh, rotate on the Z axis, 180. Cool. Back into this A, grab all the points, back into the editor. We're scaling this down. Now we're just finding that space. Good. So that one's done. Now we could do the same thing for the next one. So if we go to this one and we go uh, new material, we grab sticker one, 
we duplicate this and call it sticker two. So that way well, we won't change the other material because they're not linked. And then we have a new UV space to unwrap. But let's first apply the mirror. Let's copy this one more time though, just in case we want to make another one. Uh, uh, uh. Let's apply the mirror, apply. Now the geometry should be there, perfect. A, U, unwrap, back to UV editing. Doing the same exact thing pretty much. Quick and dirty, we got two of these stickers done. So now we have both of these basically done. We have them textured, which is half of the battle. And we have it subdivided a little bit to make it have some extra points to deform. We made the sticker in Blender. We can render it out. Boom. There they are. Awesome. Fantastic. Uh, and then now what we need to do is we need to scatter them on something. Now I'm going to grab these stickers and I'll just say M, new collection. I'll just say voting stickers. Then as we add new ones you want to add to the system, you can add them all. It's not a problem. But actually we need to apply the scaling. So apply all transformations. Whoops, nope. We just want to apply scale and apply scale. Uh, not the location, because then it will move the object uh, origin back to the origin of the world. And that's not what we want. Uh, a Suzanne, why not? And then we're going to make a geometry node system on the Suzanne. So we have a new geometry node. We're going to do a distribute points on faces to then distribute all the stickers on those points. So we have a join geometry to not lose the Suzanne. We go boom, boom. We have this collection of voting stickers we want to pull in, right? Because that's what we we're gonna, that's what we're gonna want to instance on on all of the the Suzanne. So we're gonna do separate children, I think, and then say relative. That way it keeps the. Actually, I don't think it matters because they're gonna be instance anyway. Let's find out. And then say instance on points. So we have these points. We're gonna instance these guys. I guess relative does matter. What the heck? Reset children. That's what we want to do. So I'm going to reset the children and separate them. So I changed the blend mode so we can see it a bit easier. Anyway, so basically the points are all distributed on the faces. We have the different stickers on there. Uh, but the main thing we had to do was basically make sure we have the separate children. If you had a bigger collection and let's say you only wanted to have um, the first and second uh, sticker in there, you can use a random value mode set to integer and then put it into the in instance index, then select. So for example, zero is obviously the first thing because it's uh, started on zero. So we do a min is zero and max is zero. We're only get one, one sticker. If min is one and, and max is one, we're only get the next one. So then this is a kind of a, a clean way to make sure we have a distribution between these two. And the seeds will just change how it's being distributed. Cool. So technically you don't need this if you want everything inside there going through, but I think it's nice to have it be a bit safer and a bit more robust. So we have it now covering the Suzanne, fantastic. Now what we gotta do is get them to be kind of glued on, like glued on, like shrink wrapped. So how can we do that with uh, geometry nodes? We can do that with the things we've been doing the last few tutorials. We can use the set position node and move all that geometry onto the actual face. But before we do that, we're going to need to, I guess, make it a bit easier. So we're going to rotate all of the instances to kind of have their faces like ready to go on to the Suzanne. So we're going to do that with a align rotation to vector. So we grab the normal data here and the rotation there and we're good to go because it's already inside the points on faces. Uh, and then what we're going to do also too is bring it off the geometry, like bring it off the the Suzanne just a little bit. So when it projects back onto for the set position, it'll be just, just a tiny bit easier. So we're going to translate instances and we're going to translate based off of the normal. So we'll grab reroute and we're going to grab a vector math. I think if we just do a scale, it should just work. Just a tiny bit, like 0.1. Everything's just popping off just a tiny bit. Are these inverted? <laughs> they are inverted. I guess if we go back into this, A, rotate Z, 180. Why? There's a keyframe. I don't need that. Now that's, I can read it, okay. A, rotate Z, 180. There we go. Had to double flip it, I guess. So now the normals are correct. Now what we're going to do is we're going to snap that into position, but we got to then realize the instances. Realize instances. And then we're going to take a um, set 
or geometry proximity is probably the easiest. Geom proximity, there we go, boom. I'm pretty sure we wanna have this geometry be the proximity. Let's add a reroute, pop it through, good. And then we're gonna have the sample position be these. So capture attribute, vector, no, it's just fine. Uh, position, great, pop it in. This is the position. And then if we just go pop, there we go. It all glues on. Isn't that cool? Uh, we get a little bit of distortion, but that's okay. Mm -mm -mm. Let me try this again really quick with just a cube. Mesh cube, new, grab this, geometry nodes. Uh, uh, uh. X, uh, there we go. Set the position. I think this normal data we still want, right? Offset? There we go. Pull that in. Okay, so it looks like it's working. The cube is much cleaner than the Suzanne. So maybe the, <laughs> we get a few of them pretty good right here. But the kind of this uh, insane Suzanne, it's probably, probably kind of fun. So here's kind of how to quickly do it is uh, essentially, these are all in the same direction. I don't really like that. So we're gonna do uh, rotate instances and we're gonna do a random value and we're gonna pull this in and this can be a float and it's gonna go into the rotation and we're gonna go from negative pi to pi and now we have full rotation. Oh, and now it's rotating in the all three axes. So it's actually getting a kind of a weird projection map. I kind of like that, it's kind of fun. Uh, let's clean that up though by only doing a vector rotate and then let's go here and let's go minus pi and pi. And the rest of this will be zero. There we go. So now it spins on that axis. We don't get that cool projection effect, but there we go. That's how you know it's remapping uh, as you would expect. Cool, cool. Now let's clean up the nodes a bit, I guess, before we completely do it. So we have the distribution and the instancing, and this is the lining. I'll say this is just right here. Uh, scattering stickers. And then this is, do we even need to have this translate? Actually, it looks worse with it on. Look at that. Yeah, this translate's actually making it worse. Let's delete that translate then. Okay, and let's do Control J. This is a random rotation on Z, realizing, and this right here is shrink wrapping. Shrink wrapping with geoprox, pushing like offset by normals. Nice. So we have all of this. Uh, and then now at the end, you might be thinking, oh, these, these stickers are too perfect. We could add noise or other different things to kind of clean it up and make it a bit aged. So, okay, we have uh, the stickers. We're happy with how they're kind of uh, shrink wrapped and kind of moved all around. Really quickly, let's go through a non-procedural way of shrink wrapping. So we're gonna go out of geometry nodes and we're gonna grab a new mesh just to make it easier. And I think it will map onto Suzanne a bit easier. So we go to mesh, Suzanne, grab monkey, and we grab one of these, shift D, Pull out, let's say this is a new collection, let's say uh, shrink wrap modifier. Uh, deform, it's gonna be shrink wrap, which is right here. And then we're not gonna do nearest surface, we're gonna do project, which will be a bit easier on, on uneven surfaces. Cause we're, we're basically doing a non-projection method for the geometry nodes. And that's why on the flat planes, it looks good. And on the Suzanne, it kind of looks a little bit more <laughs> messed up, that's okay. And with the object we're choosing, is we're gonna choose this target object. And then we need to do, I think negative, and then offset it by a tiny bit. And so as we move this and rotate it, it's gonna change the projection of, of the sticker to be based off of how we're seeing it and it's projecting on top of the surface. So if we offset it a tiny bit, we're gonna get it onto there. So this is kind of a quick way of doing another way of scattering the stickers. And it's really, it's really dependent on essentially uh, the orientation of the sticker and it's projecting onto the actual surface itself. So this is basically how it would work with the, if you do a shrink wrap modifier on this way, 
uh, so you, you kind of do project on the surface and then you can make it like this. And if you shift D it, it'll keep all the modifiers and you can kind of move them around. It kind of makes these kind of weird effects as it projects the geometry on the other mesh. So if you look around, it looks kind of more blown out, but on certain spots, like when you're looking at it from this angle, you see it projects kind of perfectly. So there you go. So that's a quick way of doing the shrink wrap modifier as well as kind of a more procedural way where you kind of scatter some points and then just kind of glue them all into the surface. So I hope now with this, you can um, hopefully make some cool renders about how you voted and, and uh, uh, learn something new. Augury.